I've got a flush here, lads. Three, four, five, six, seven, on the bounce. Look, read them and weep. I think you're fine, this is all mine. Uh... Hello? You got half out, Joe? Half out? I'm playing cards. Deal me? Don't be stupid, I'm not going to play with anyone dressed up as a pink panther. Don't be a div. Can you believe that? Has anyone seen Elvis? I'm over here, boys! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome live on stage the love monkey himself, Joe Pasquale. show earlier on today at an old age pensioners club. They wrote to me and said, can you call in? And I went, all right, then I'm on my way around there, I'll do it, right? And I don't like doing that sort of thing if I can help it if I'm busy, but I did not like to do it because there was old age pensioners, right? And I knew they was going to be old because it was an old age pensioners club, right? <laughs> but I didn't think they was going to be as old as they were, right? It was like a scene from Cocoon, right? And it was really old. <laughs> These people, they were so old. Right? Now, I don't mind though, I like old people, right? But I didn't think, you know, they, they, when these people were at school, there was no history, right? <laughs> it was called current affairs then. This is how old I thought. I thought, I can't hit them too hard, I'll take it nice and easy, starting off slow with a knock knock joke, right? So I went knock knock, and they all went, not until you show us some form of identification. Complete <laughs> bloody nightmare. So look, look at this. No, you're going to need that later on in the evening. Look, I've got loads of stuff on the boot sale to do for you tonight, right? Now, I'm going to be honest, there might be some stuff tonight you've seen before, and there might be some stuff you haven't seen before, and there's going to be a lot of stuff that I haven't seen before because uh, I don't know what the bloody hell I'm going to do, OK? <laughs> I've got a rough idea, right? I'm not coming here and not knowing what I'm doing at all. I have a rough idea, I have a skeleton, I have a plan, right? I mean, this is the plan, right? But it doesn't matter if I stick to it. We could go off one way, we could go off another, right? I don't think it matters because I don't plan it too much. If you plan it, and then if you don't plan it, Nothing can go wrong, it's great, isn't it? Because like, you just do anything. Oh, I didn't mean to do it, but it don't matter because I didn't mean to do anything. So there you go. What? Oh, see, you didn't know I was going to do that. They didn't see. I just hit off the top of my head. Hey, cool, he's a boy, isn't he? Because I don't. I don't I, I, I basically, you pay 12 50 to watch a bloke who don't know his ass from his elbow, as usual. But the important thing is, I don't care. I think that as long as we have a laugh tonight, as long as all of us go, ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Preferably all together, that makes it nice, doesn't it, right? But I think that's what's important, right? What is really important is that you get value for money, though. That's what I think. Because if you pay £12.50, right, I want to do £12.50s with a show for you, right? I won't stop at, I won't stop at like, 11 quid and have you go home and go, he owes me £1.50. I won't do that. <laughs> If you pay 12.50, I won't stop till I've done 12.50, OK? I'll, until I get to 12.50, I really think I've done... I might not even stop at 12.50. I might keep going tonight. I might do, like, 12.75 or 13. <laughs> you might even go home with a few quid in your pocket there. Yeah. <laughs> but I doubt it very much, right? So what I'm going to do 
do, right? See, what I'm going to do, because a lot of people, I'm going to start off with one of my best jokes, right? I personally think this joke that I'm going to do, right, start off here, I think it's worth about 10 quid all on its own, right? And I think, if you had to go early, oh, I've got to go for whatever reason it might be, you'd be quite happy just after this joke. Well, it doesn't matter. Only missed £2.50's worth, so it doesn't really matter. And you, a lot of people, they say the best stuff to the end, right? First hour was a load of cack, right? And you think it was a load of cack, but the last 10 minutes, you remember vividly, oh, that was wonderful, right? But not me. I start off really good, then it starts going down, right? And you really look, but afterwards you go, oh my God, that was amazing. He should have saved that to the end because I really enjoyed that. That was so funny. My sides are splitting. Oh. Okay, so this is it, right? And you, you will, you're going to sit there and go, cool, oh, blimey, he's a boy, and, he, and you're going to love it, right? What this is, this is my impression of a break dancing slug. <laughs> <laughs> See, I poured the salt over him and I melted it, didn't I? I poured the salt over him and melted the slug. I poured the salt. It's going to be a bloody long night, isn't it, eh? <laughs> People say to me, people say, Joe, I say what? They say, what's the secret of good comedy? And I don't know. <laughs> I don't, all I know is what they say, right? I don't even know who they are. I've never met them. I don't know who they are, but I know what they say. And they say that the secret of good comedy is down to one thing. And that one thing, ladies and gentlemen, is timing. And that's probably true, because tonight is Saturday night and you come out to see a lovely show. Now, if I turned up tomorrow night and you lot weren't here, <laughs> It's not very good timing, is it? Because like, I know you can't tell just by looking at me. I've got a really bad back. I've been playing piggyback with my nephew. And he's only seven and I fell off three times, right? <laughs> and it's because it's so difficult to keep kids amused. They get bored so easy. Oh, I like Pokemon. No, I don't like it no more. And that's because the world is moving so fast. Technology, the whole world runs on technology, right? Last week, my sister had a baby and that came out cordless. <laughs> I'm doing comedy this side and tragedy over it. It's everything, everything is technology. One of my hobbies, right, I'm on the internet. I've got a computer, I'm on the internet, and it's great, right? If you're on the internet, you can talk to anyone around the world. And a couple of days ago, I spoke to a girl from India, and her website address was www.ontheforehead. <laughs> so, so I didn't think you was going to get that, but you did, did you? Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> Hobbies, right? I actually collect goldfish farts for spirit levels, right? Because... No, I bloody do! A lot of people don't know what that little bubble in the yellow liquid is, and that's a goldfish. If you get a spirit level and break it open, you can actually hear it going <laughs> like that, you can. Because people phone me up all around and say, Joe, my goldfish is going to blow off, and I'll get round double quick, and I'll put it in the syringe and put it on the shelf, right? Because you always know when a goldfish is going to blow off because their eyes bulge out. <laughs> like that, right? And all the, when they've done it, all the other fish in the tank swim at the end going, Pooh, that really hustles, that one. <laughs> and they swim about going, Good, pull my fin. Oh, dear. <laughs> you, you, know, <laughs> you know which one's done it, because I jet propelled for about three seconds. Go, Wee, like that, and bang their heads on the tank. Right? And the best ones is koi carp. You always know when a koi carp has blown off, because they say they get their name, they go all koi afterwards. <laughs> No, they do, they go, pardon my little bottom, like that, because I was watching Blue Peter the other day, not the television programme, my next-door neighbour has got a terrible circulation problem. <laughs> You're going to have to work a little bit harder than this tonight, I said, I said, why don't you get a pacemaker? He said, a pacemaker? I can't run, let alone keep up with someone. <laughs> We'll get back to the goldfish farts then, because the thing is, I did breed my own goldfish, and this is in my knee. I've got one in here, his name's Nigel, right? And it's a very boring existence being a goldfish, isn't it, right? Because you just swim about, and then uh, swim about, and swim about. And they've only got a 15 second memory, so if you do take them out, by the time they've got back, they've forgotten about it, right? So I do like to take him out, that's why he's here tonight. I took him down the chip shop last week, right? And I had him under my arm, I went in, I said, Excuse me, have you got any fish cakes? He went, No, nah, I sold the last one. I went, Oh, it's a shame. It's his birthday today. Because <laughs> on Blue Peter, they actually show you on Blue Peter how, how you can take your goldfish on holiday, right? And all you have to do to take your goldfish on is get a little net like this, right? And you get them in the net. Come on, Nigel, go on the holidays. Come on, don't be silly, boy. 
That's it. Don't pack nothing. Not playing for long. That's it. Get out. That's it. You drop him in the jar of water there like that. That's it. Come to the top. There he comes. And all I do is take him on holiday. You just put one of these in the water. Look, see. Watch, watch, see. Watch, Kevin. There he goes. There he goes. There. See, there he goes. There. See, he's on holiday. He thinks he's shooting the rapids. That's what he thinks. See? He thinks he's going down Niagara Falls, doesn't he? Eh? <laughs> That's what he thinks. £12.50, eh? <laughs> You know, this, you know what I really hate? Now, you must have had this, right? If you go around someone's house, no, it's not that I don't like dogs, because I do like dogs. I just don't like it when a dog wants to make friends, right? Because <laughs> when dogs make... They don't shake your hand and go, oh, hello, how are you? They don't do that. They're on your leg, like... <laughs> and they won't stop until they're finished. And when they are finished, they're to add insult to injury. They start sniffing your nuts, don't they, right? <laughs> so what I've done, I've invented a belt to stop dogs sniffing your privates. Look, so you just put this on there like that, see, like that, and they go, hey, hey, and they can't get to you, can they? <laughs> no, that's right, Joe, they can't. But look, see this one here? This is a belt to stop dogs sniffing my privates. Look, you see, just put that on there. So like, hey, 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 and they can't get... Oh, that one gets a bloody round of applause. Look, it's only a joke. It's not real life or to scale or nothing. Because what really does you, if you go down the park, there's all these people with their pet dogs, right? And I feel sorry for the dogs, because they don't do nothing other than go and fetch sticks, don't they? And they think, oh, it's fun for the dog. And they throw the stick, he goes, oh, I'll get it for you. And he runs off, and that's all he's does. And then he goes, here, there's a frisbee. What you do with that? I'll go and get it then. And he goes, so just to wind these people up, next time you go down the park, right, get a toy dog with a frisbee stuck on it like this, right, and just go, wee! <laughs> 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 be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> What's even better, though, if you go down the park and get a toy dog with a boomerang stuck on the end of it like this, right, just go, wee oh, wee wee time, didn't you? I was standing there, I said this up, it's always a long way round, or oh, I go as quick as I can, you said. What, you taking a bloody leisurely stroll? <laughs> he said, what do you do? I'm dead here. They thought I'd forgotten something. I'm just waiting for you to throw the bloody dog back at me, aren't I? What, what does that, no, don't, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? What, you got no neck? I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. Next time I want it quicker, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've been pulled up by the police, right, for not having a seatbelt on, cos you don't need it no more. If you ever get pulled up by the police for not having a seatbelt, just go and put one of these on, right, and just go, look, it was like when I was a kid, my mum used to put her arm out and stop me going through the windscreen. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is it just my mum that used to do it then, or what? one of my best jokes and it got bugger all, didn't it? It got absolutely bloody nothing. I think it's one of the funniest ones and it got absolutely nothing. It's too late laughing there at it, love, isn't it? <laughs> Can I have a drum roll, please? So there's a hole in the stage, it bounced away from it. Should have been one smooth movement from there to there. Catch on my nose, but no. You step in your bottle of tango. Don't think I seem to see you sneak it in there. It's not a bloody social club, love. You get your gin out and all like that with your tango. Get a shot of her on her tango. Get a shot of her on her tango. On, hold it up, love. Hold it up. See? <laughs> see I'm confiscating that. You ain't bloody having that. Not it's not like bloody bingo club or nothing, OK? I was trying to do a trick there and it bounced the wrong way and you laughed in the wrong place and that was why I saw the tango. So it serves you laugh in the wrong place, don't it, eh? <laughs> not so funny in there, is it, love, eh?
<laughs> Beware the badger, it said on the gate. It bit off my tadger, I read it too late. <laughs> when kids get the hump, they lose the bones in their arms, didn't they? <laughs> oh, I'm not going shopping again. Uh, oh, she hit me first. Uh, I'm not going around nuns again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> when I was really little, right, my dad caught me in the bath, and I was on my own at the time, and he said, don't do that, you go blind. I said, I'm over here, Dad. <laughs> now, I know that's an old joke, right? That's an old bit. It got me thinking. I wonder what Stevie Wonder's parents said to him. Just <laughs> oh, leave that there, leave that. Because this is one of my hobbies. You've got to try this. One of my favourite hobbies, right? You've got to go into a sweet shop and you pick up a Mars bar and you go to the can and you go, excuse me, is this Mars bar for sale? And they go, yes, it is. Would you like to buy it? Go, no, I've got a few more to see. Yeah, I might come back later. And it really screws their head up, right? But the best one is you pick up the phone and phone the local library. And when they answer the phone, they go, yes, can I help you? Go, no, I'm just browsing and put the phone down. <laughs> These days, I'm also quite an accomplished impressionist, and that's what I'd like to do for you tonight. I'd like to do some impressions for you now that mean a lot to me, and I think they mean a lot to you as well. And I think by the end of it, it'll bring us all closer together. I think all the women will really enjoy it. I think the women will go, oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? And all the men will go, oh, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> and I think the first impression tonight is going to be my impression of Prince Charles. <laughs> My second impression, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is Prince Charles when he was 11. <laughs> My third impression there is Fred Flintstone sings Fiddler on the Roof. Thank you. If I was a rich man, a yeah, ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da. You know, I've sussed out. I've sussed. I'm not waiting for these. You know, I've sussed out. I've sussed out that every single part of your body has got a name. If you look at your body, right, every single part has got a name, right? and especially your hands and fingers. If you look at your fingers, right, you've got lovely names. You've got your thumb and your index finger and your middle finger and your ring finger and your pinky finger, and you look at that and you go, oh, that's the same. That's lovely, right? But if you look down at your toes. They ain't got no names, have they? <laughs> they well, no, I lie. Two of them have you got the big one and the little one, but I've not really thought this through properly yet. But <laughs> <laughs> those three in the middle, they ain't got no names, have they? You can't go to the doctors and go, oh, I stubbed the one that wants roast beef. Cool. <laughs> Still needs a bit of work on it, that one, doesn't it? It's a legend. Yes, what I'd like to do now, I'd like to pay tribute to one of the greatest storytellers ever told. It's my tribute to that lovely man, Mr. Hans Christian Andersen. Thumbelina, oh. Thumbelina, tiny little thing. Thumbelina dance, oh, Thumbelina sing. Thumbelina, what's the difference if your face is small? When your heart is full of love, you're nine feet tall. Though so you're no bigger than my thumb. Oh, than my thumb. Very good, than my thumb. Sweet thumb, Bellino, don't be glum. Hum, hum, hum. Come, come, come. You really should get out more, shouldn't you? <laughs> oh, you just suck it in every time. Oh, are you thirsty yet, love? <laughs> Tough titty. <laughs> So why is it the homeless people only drink tenants? <laughs> OK, so... This, I had to go to the doctor. I went to the doctor and said, Doctor, when I get up in the morning, I sing Delilah. And when I go to bed at night, I sing the green, green glass of home. He said, it's a Tom Jones syndrome. I said, is it very rare? He said, it's not unusual. <laughs> Okay, so ladies and what I'm about to do now, this next thing I'm about to do, I like to call my next bit. I heard somebody drop a bottle then as well. <laughs> Don't think I didn't see it. Rolled down the aisle, but I'm gonna leave it because it was obviously empty. <laughs> She'd be after it though, licking the inside. <laughs> <of me. laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my next bit is very dangerous. This next bit is entitled Knife Juggling in the Dark. <laughs> you don't give a monkeys, do you? <laughs> 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 
can't get my knives in. I don't really care to... Oh, I'll tread on my hand then. Oh. <laughs> What's funny about that? <laughs> it's not my hand, didn't hurt at all. <laughs> but... <laughs> Where have you been for the last 20 bloody minutes then? Let's have no laugh here. Look, see, look, if it was my hand, you thought it was really funny, didn't you? But when you found out it wasn't my hand, it wasn't funny at all, was it? Eh? I don't know what's funny or what's not now, I don't. What, look, see, doesn't hurt me at all. But somewhere, somewhere in a shop, there's a shop window dummy going, oh! <laughs> okay, so let's just... This are the implements of destruction that I will be using now. <laughs> Have my fingers caught in between the handles then. I might get a blood blister, right? That's the only time you laugh is if I hurt myself, and it? Oh, it's right on me end. Didn't really hurt. It's not funny, is it? You might want to lean back a little bit in the front. It's up to you. Not forcing you or nothing, can I? <laughs> OK. Knife juggling in the dark. So you still don't care, do you, eh? <laughs> Can I have all the lights out, please? Complete blackout. Oh, I can't see bugger all now. Okay, okay here we go. And whoa! Whee! Whoa! Oh, oh, I nearly dropped that one. Oh, that's, oh, that's great. Three million unemployed and I've got a dickhead on the lights. Can you believe this? <laughs> Man, here's something you don't see very often. She walks like an angel She talks like an angel She walks like an angel But I got wise You're a devil in disguise Oh yes you are A devil in disguise Oh yes you are I think it ain't getting in Every night <laughs> you can take her home, she's ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for my second tribute to that lovely man, Mr. Hans Christian Anderson. <gasps> inchworm, inchworm, measuring the marigolds. You and your arithmetic will probably. Go far. <sighs> Some of you aren't too sure about this tonight, are you? <laughs> See this? See, this is my granny's bra, right? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, she sleeps on the top bunk and 
my granddad laughs endlessly on the bottom bunk, right? And the thing is, she was going to commit suicide. She was going to shoot herself, but she didn't know where her heart was. So she went to the doctor's, right? And the doctor said, your heart is two inches below your left breast. So she shot herself in the knee. It was terrible. <laughs> OK, what else have we got? I'll see this. What have you got to do? Just for a laugh, you'll go to a Vietnamese restaurant with one of these and go, Come on, Fido, where are you, boy? <laughs> OK, what else? Oh, this is good as well. So this, this is a dummy for an ugly baby. Look, see, look. <laughs> That's good. And this one here, this is for anybody out there that's self-employed. If you're self-employed, this is the envelope you want to send your tax return back in. Look, see, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> Is there, right? So I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever been to a football match. You've ever been to a football match, right? and people get so excited they start throwing stuff, right? Like toilet rolls, and it makes such a mess. And somebody's got to clean it up, right? So what I've done, I've got my own invention here, right? And what this does, this actually pinpoints exactly where you want the toilet roll to land, right? And it's really good. Watch this. Watch, watch, watch. That's it. That's it. Go on, love. Take it. That's it. Take it, love. Take it all. That's it. You know you want it. We could be here for some time tonight, ladies and gents. At least it's cooling you down, though, isn't it, love, eh? That's it. You say, yeah, you know you want it. You're having trouble getting your breath. Don't worry. <laughs> See? Let's save your nip into the loo now, isn't it, eh? <laughs> She's not smiling. OK. So, oh, this is great. What is it just a wind-up? What you've got to do, just to wind some up, right, is drive down the road. Drive down the road with this hanging out your petrol tank, right? And... <laughs> See how many people try and pull you up. Oh, you came out the garage too quick. No, I bloody didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> Everybody's getting so wound up, isn't it? They're so good. The worst place to get wound up, right, is if you're going on holiday at the airport. That's a word. I guarantee at the airport, within five minutes, you get wound up, right? And that's because you're queuing up. And when you get to the end of the queue, right, they look at your ticket and they go, Oh, you're going to Benidorm, lovely. Where do you want your luggage to go? <laughs> the same place I'm going, you spanner. So what do you want to do? Next time you go abroad, right, when you get to the airport, have a big map of the world on the side of your clothes. So now I send it there. Send it there, you div. It'll bloody get there then, won't it, right? And then, and then you have to go through the x-ray department, right? So just to wind up the bloke in the x-ray, right, have a skeleton in your case. I go, oh, look, look. I don't know who it is. I didn't package myself. I don't know. <laughs> and, then, and then if you go somewhere hot, if you go somewhere like Spain or France or anything like that, and you get on the beach, you get all those big, beefy bodybuilders walking about like that, right? And they wear those skimpy trunks made out of lycra, right? And they're called speedo trunks. And I always think they're far too small for the package that they're carrying, right? And I find them highly offensive. So this is my impression of one of those blokes, one of those bodybuilders <laughs> on holiday in those skimpy little trunks. <laughs> See, now you've seen them, I know you've seen them, because they walk about like that. So... Oh, yes. And then they start scratching, don't they? So... <laughs> I don't know, some sort of irritation. I don't know what it could be, but I don't want it when I'm on a bloody holiday. Get, get off, you Nolans. OK. Uh, now, this, this is my favourite impression, this one. Right? I, don't, I don't know if anybody's ever been to the Grand Prix races, but it cost you about 40 quid for a day out, out there, right? And a lot of people go, these greasers with the long hair, right, and the leather jackets. So this is my impression of one of those greasers on a day out at the, at the Grand Prix races, right? <laughs> <laughs> Him, for God's sake. <laughs> That's it, 40 quid for that. Can you believe it? That's all you get for your money. That's bloody insult, if you ask me. Because you know... <laughs> you know what I've sussed out? I've sussed out why Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Halloween. It's because they don't want strange people walking up their garden, knocking on the door and talking for ten minutes about something they don't really believe in. That's why they don't celebrate it. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing about Jehovah's Witnesses, right, is when they all die, they go up to heaven and God and St. Peter are hiding behind the gates going, shh, pretend we're not in. That's what's really good about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm never going to do please, really. I'm going to do some very serious magic, ladies and gentlemen. What you're about to see tonight involves no camera trickery at all. What you see is what you get. This is going to blow your socks off. So strap yourselves in for the rides of your lives. Let's do it, boys.
Ladies and gentlemen, what you're about to see is not a trick. This illusion is performed by two highly trained professionals. Do not in any way try to recreate this in the confines of your own home. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the experience. Those pants are minging. <laughs> You're it. Squitzes. Squitzes. <laughs> Can I have some magic music, please? Oh. Bloody late now, isn't it?
looks all right now, doesn't it? <laughs> Probably just needs a bit of soldering. <laughs> so. Probably do it myself. Save paying out someone else to mend it in the hall just a bit. when cousins marry. When Sam or Rabbit died, I said we'd get a shoebox and put dear Sam inside. We'd bury him beneath the swing that stands next to your slide. <laughs> and then we'll have a party. <laughs> Are you watching the same show as everyone else? <laughs> and then we'll have a party. The best you've ever seen. Play party games, eat sausage rolls, have gently with ice cream. <laughs> when she heard my story, all she could say was, Wow, why wait until the day he dies? Let's kill the bunny now. <laughs> I can't believe you. That's one of the saddest poems I've ever heard, and you could... You must wet your knickers at Panorama, mustn't you? <laughs> You know, I, I, listen, I actually met, I did a television show a few months ago, Yuri Geller. I actually met Yuri Geller when I was a kid, right? And the thing was, I didn't believe any of the stuff that he'd done was possible. He used to get all his cutlery, right? And he'd bend it, just using the power of his mind. And I didn't believe it too. I was very sceptic about the whole thing, right? I thought, there's no way. Right. What? Well, I see, oh, there's a few sceptics out there tonight, isn't there? <laughs> I don't know if you, do you believe in that sort of, I tell you, if you believe in psychokinesis, raise my left hand now. <laughs> oh, there's a quite a few out there, isn't there? No, all you've got to do, you can do this yourself, just get a spoon right from your kitchen, make sure it's silver, aluminium, something like that, and you just put your thumb on it there, just rest it gently there like that, right? And all you have to do is just stroke it there, provocatively, like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you do it, look at it, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I feel it, okay, look, it's just wobble it a bit, huh? <laughs> oh, look, it's going on its own, it's nearly gone. Now, these next few seconds, ladies and gentlemen, are crucial. Whatever you do, do not take your eyes off the spoon for one second. <laughs> what was that? What happened then? <laughs> what happened? Did anyone see what happened then? <laughs> oh, my God, look! <laughs> oh, I bet you bloody missed it, didn't you? <laughs> what, did you look away? Oh, it, isn't it always the bloody way? Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> OK, so ladies and what I'm going to do, I'm going to stay in this mystical vein, cos that's where I like it, and I'm going to introduce you now to a man you've already met this evening, and you probably know him better as my twin brother, Reynard. Yes, indeed, but in actual fact, ladies and gents, he has, he has been training with the Dalai Lama and Brad Pitt in the Himalayas, learning the mysteries of the universe, and he's going to share the secrets with us tonight. So please make him for a warm and welcome, a big round of your love and applause for my mystical twin brother, Reynard! <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is my mystical twin brother, Reynard. And as you can see, we're not identical twins, ladies and gentlemen. As we were split up at birth, and Reynard was brought up by a family of killer ants. <laughs> that correct? Yes. Oh, yes, you're so muscular. Oof. You've got a bit of a packet down there tonight, haven't you? <laughs> What's that you got down there? Yes, it wasn't there last night. What is it? <laughs> I can see the outline of something, it's not human, so what is it? <laughs> it's not you, because you didn't know it. <laughs> Why do you flinch as I just brush past you? You have no reason to fear me. I will not hurt you. All right. <laughs> Don't be so afraid. That killer ant instinct in you, come on. That's more like, oh, yes, oh, that's, oh, yes. Oh, that's scary, that, oh, that's scary. Oh, you've got the willies there, oh, yes. That's good. Ah, see? <laughs> I felt it crunch under my knuckles, OK? You've got my mint arrow in there, haven't you? <laughs> I don't want it now. Leave it where it is, thank you very much. It won't be very minty now, will it? That was all right there. That was all right. It looked all right there, like that. It bloody did, love! <laughs> No-one would have noticed there was anything wrong with it. Is this my radio? <laughs> <laughs> it is! <laughs> You've licked it! No, I haven't. You have? No. It was on my shelf next to me bendy bully and my jar of honey. <laughs> <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> I can't believe you sometimes. <laughs> Where's all this come from tonight? You did, you nicked it. I didn't even know you had a bendy bully. I did. I have. <laughs> See what happens when you try and think on your own? <laughs> Yes, it does hurt, yeah. yes. It does, doesn't it? I had to lose the wind to get that bendy bully. <laughs> this is not your radio. It is, you've nicked it. No. Tea it, leaf. It's not your radio. It's mine. No, it looks... Mine. No, listen, look at me in the eye. Look at me in the eye. <laughs> this might look like yours. Very similar, that. Yes, very yeah. similar. But it's not yours. See it all? See? No, not mine. No, it's not yours. No? No. no. Do you know why this isn't yours? Why, why not? No. Because yours wasn't broken, was it? <laughs> what? <laughs> Take that stupid look off your face. <laughs> well, see this? See this? This, ladies and gentlemen, this is Darth Vader. And this. This is Darth Maul. <laughs> and this is Darth Bugger. <laughs> and tonight, Darth Bugger and myself are going to perform some voodoo magic for you. Because in here, ladies and gentlemen, I have in here, I have the perambulator of Beelzebub. And inside the perambulator of Beelzebub, I have a voodoo dummy. At the moment, it has no human form, but very soon, it will take on human like qualities. Reynard, I need a look at your golden hair. Oh, from under your arm. <laughs> Always oh, quite a lot to choose from there, isn't there? Yes, a, oh. it's a little bit slippy under there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I need to be able to get a grip of it, don't I, eh? Yeah, that's better. So that's oh yeah, I can get a tug on it there, can't I, eh? I can get a really good tug on it, can't I? Now how do you want it, teacher get cocky now, wouldn't it, eh? <laughs> do you want it fast or slow? Fast! What? Fast, fast would be nice. Fast would be You don't want it like that, then? No. You don't want it like that? You sure you don't like it? Don't no, fast would be fine, then. Yes, I... Oh, God! Now I sprinkle it upon the voodoo... Do oh, it's stuck to my fingers, for God's sake! <laughs> you are a dirty, minging hound, aren't you, eh? 
No, I must summon the voodoo spirits, ladies and gentlemen, using this, the ancient bargain bucket of Kentucky. There, Reynard, place that upon your noggin there. <laughs> now, we must summon the voodoo spirits, ladies and gentlemen, using... <laughs> don't do that, it's a cheap laugh, OK? <laughs> and we don't do things for cheap laughs, do we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get you then? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> See, now that's funny, we keep that in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I should sprinkle this upon your head. Now don't worry about this, Reynard. I'm just pouring something on your head. Do you smell something? Yes, yeah, probably your minging armpits. <laughs> well, it could be the petrol. Yes. Just a small amount. No, less than that. Less than that? No, just enough to run a small moped. <laughs> oh, and you'll be visited by the spirits. You was once visited in the night by spirits, wasn't you? Yeah, because you woke up in the morning covered in ectoplasm. Yeah. Well, that's what you said it was, anyway. <laughs> so now... It gets better, love. It does get better. <laughs> now, we must summon the voodoo spirits, and we do this by this, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, <laughs> Dinner, anyway. Yes. yes, now we must make an ancient Inca incantation. Make a lick high, make a high knee ho. Make a lick ho. <laughs> well, blow it out, you div. Blow it. Not with me standing there. You could have. I'm standing there. <sighs> That's all you have to do, isn't it, you monkey spanker? Eh? <laughs> Get back there. Now, oh my word, look, it's taken on human-like form. Look, it's quite amazing. Look at that, look. <laughs> oh, no. Now, whatever happens to the dummy happens to you. Let's see how ticklish you are. Oh, <laughs> uh, you like that? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> how much do you uh, like it? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that difficult to follow, OK? <laughs> <laughs> now the really difficult one. <laughs> what do you call that? What's that supposed to be, then? <laughs> Get up! Get up now! As you can see, ladies and gents, me and Reynard, we like to play games, right? But the problem we have is nobody ever wants to play with us, so we always end up having to play with each other. So what I want to do tonight... <laughs> you can't say a bloody word, can you, eh? <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gents, I want to play a game, but I need a volunteer. So what I'm going to do, I'll get a nice foxy mama with the tango. What's your name, you hot piece of totty? <laughs> Maureen, would you play a game with me tonight, Maureen? You would indeed. Yeah, ladies, good morning. Big round of applause. Come up here then, Maureen. Well done, lovely. Come on, lovely. Oh. Thank you, Maureen. I oh, like that little outfit. That's it. Use the stairs rather than climb up, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you, Maureen. That's it. Take your time, Maureen. Don't worry, love. That's it. You come over here and you sit down on this lovely chair I've got for you. You're very foxy, aren't you, in the light, eh? That's how you've got the Dr. Shoals on as well, haven't you? A lot of people think they're Dr. Skulls, but I oh, know they're not. They're Dr. Shoals. I actually met him and he was swimming with fish. And that's how I know. Nice little dress as well, like that one. It's very summery, isn't it, eh? Do you know what I'm doing there, Maureen? I'm teasing you. <laughs> Because I'm all bloke tonight. That's what I'm doing. Can I do something? Watch, watch. <laughs> One o'clock. <laughs> Two o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's begging for it now. <laughs> Maureen, I must ask. Do you like playing games, Maureen? Oh, you like this game? Look, this is a great game. I like this one. Right? <laughs> now, 
Do you remember a programme called All Creatures Great and Small? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Uh, Maureen, I must ask you, love, have I ever been round your house? No, you'd remember me if I'd been round there, wouldn't you? <laughs> and you don't remember me, do you? No. OK, what about now? Don't you remember me now, eh? <laughs> Because I remember you, you bath time bell. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, yes, she wants it. OK, well, I'm worried. Look, see, this is my mouth all. Give this the first. Just get this water. Just have a blow on my mouth all. Hard as you can. Just blow. Just blow, love. That's lovely. Thank you. I dropped that down the toilet earlier today and just <laughs> cleaned that out for me. That's lovely, isn't it? £12.50, eh? OK, so what we're going to do, Maureen, this is where we actually play a really good game now. We're going to play a game that I've invented myself, because every year at Christmas, right, they have big games that come out that try and outsell everybody else for the kids, right? And this is going to be this year's big game, because, like, last year it was something called Pokemon, right? And then the year before that, I think it was, like, Teletubbies, the year before it was Buzz Lightyear, that sort of thing, right? And this is going to be this year's big game, and me and you could be the first people to do it, right? All you've got to do is hang on those marshmallows, right? And this is your job in the game. This is all you've got to do. you just got to push it down there, right, and put a marshmallow on it, leave the rest to me. That's all you have to do, OK? That's all you've got to do. Is that all right? If you start on that one, then go to that one, that one and that one, and leave the rest to me. Is that all right? Don't eat them, though, will you? No, push it down first, you dozy mare. This is not going to work, is it? That's it. Move on to the next one, Maureen. Don't wait for me, love. Don't wait. That's it. That's it. Now, catch hold. If you get hold of these, keep hold of them, because you're going to need them in a minute. Now, whatever you do, right, do not eat these, OK? Remember that... Remember that my fingers have been round Reynard's armpits, OK? So go, <laughs> keep going, Maureen, keep going, love. Oh, yeah, we're getting up. See if I'm getting right about right up the back. Oh, yes. And the gate up the back, yes. Oh, yes, I do very good at this. And she get right up the back again, boy. That's what Oh! OK, you got to get... Is that it done, love? OK, now sit back down there. This is the second part of the game, right? This is where we find out what prize you're going to go home with tonight, Maureen, OK? Oh, you've got to take your glasses off for a sec, love. Don't have to see this, OK? Put this down over your head. Yeah. Lean back. That's it. Well, you have got your bingo dress on, haven't you, eh? Eyes down, look in. OK, that's great, right? Now, what happens is everybody that's got the marshmallows, right? No, lean back, lean back, love. Now, who's ever got the marshmallows? You have to throw them there, right? And you have to try and get Maureen's eye out, OK? <laughs> What you got to do, you got to try and catch them. Lean back, you silly heart. That's it, lean back there. You got to throw them, and she has to catch them in the net there, right? Now, the more you catch them there, Maureen, the bigger prize she goes home with, OK? <laughs> OK, go. <laughs> oh, keep still, Maureen, you nearly had one, love. Oh, that was... was... Oh, through the fingers of desire. Oh, my God. Well, it looks like you're going home with bugger all tonight, Maureen, <laughs> didn't That was just complete cat. I'm, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put one in there for you, like there, see? At least you get a consolation prize, don't you, eh? Two more. You only needed two more and you could have got the car. <laughs> oh, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about your nose. Sorry, love. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a lovely consolation prize for you. I know what I've got for you, Maureen. I've got a lovely state-of-the-art, top-of-the-range CD, cassette, radio and television, and that's for you, love. You're welcome. Ladies, let's big round of applause for the lovely Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, get your tango, yes. You can have your tango as well, love. Thank you very much. No, that's yours, that is, love. You ungrateful cow. <laughs> it only needs a bit of bloody soldering done to it. <laughs> Just take it back to Dixon's. Just tell him you can't find the receipt. That will work. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, ladies, you've been really nice so far tonight. You've been a challenge and... You've won, and this next bit, ladies and gents, this next bit of the show is like a story and a song all rolled into one. And it's a story and a song about one of my old girlfriends called Dave. And <laughs> I went out with her for a few months, and she was an airline stewardess, and she packed me up after a few months. She told me where to get off. She went here, here, or here. <laughs> and Everything was fine in the relationship until she started going down the gym and taking anabolic steroids. And 
skipjack tuna. <laughs> and she'd come back from the gym and she'd be all pumped up and aggressive and she'd beat me up with a cricket bat. <laughs> but I got used to that. It was just the minging smell of skipjack tuna I couldn't take. <laughs> it was terrible, it really was. And then she'd dance for me in the living room and I remember it vividly because her long ginger hair would be flowing off of her knuckles and it was... And whenever I sing this song, sometimes I picture her in my mind dancing for me and... <laughs> and tonight probably happened. Maybe, maybe you as well. When I sing this, maybe you'll be able to picture her dancing for you. <laughs> I'd say that was a distinct possibility, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and this is how the song about our relationship goes. Thank you very much. very long but now things are changing oh I wonder what's wrong seems you don't want me around the passion is gone and the flames died down you know I lost a little bit of self-esteem the time that you made it with the whole hockey team <laughs> You used to think I was nice Now you tell all your friends that I'm the Antichrist Oh, why did you disconnect the brakes on my car? That kind of thing is hard to ignore Got funny feeling you don't love me anymore I knew that we were having problems when you put those piranhas in my bathtub again. You're still the light of my life. Oh, darling, I'm begging, won't you put down that knife? You know, I even think it's kind of cute the way you poison my coffee just a little each day I still remember how you laughed cool. Oh, when you pushed me down the elevator shaft Oh, if you don't mind me asking What's this poisonous cobra Doing in my underwear drawer Sometimes I get to thinking You don't love me anymore <laughs> I can't look at it, I really can't <laughs> You slam my face down on the barbecue grill Then my scars are all healing But my heart never will You set my house on fire then you pulled out my chest hairs with an old pair of pliers oh, I think I'm ugly and you say I'm cheap You shaved off my eyebrows while I was asleep You drilled a hole in my head Then you dumped me in a drainage ditch and left me for dead Oh, you know this really isn't like you at all You never acted this way before Go funny feeling You don't love me anymore Oh no <laughs> You don't love me Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Pesquale. Joe Pesquale, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Pesquale. Look at the time, you know what? I've forgotten it. I 
I've nearly forgotten my final tribute to that lovely man, Mr. Hans Christian Anderson. <laughs> oh, the king was in the all together, the all together, the all together, the all together, isn't it? The king was in the all together, isn't it? The king was in the all together, isn't it? Your bloody money's worth now, haven't you, Maureen, eh? <laughs> Does the word moist mean anything to you? I think you find it does, love. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ray's got a lovely little chad for a bloke, hasn't he, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, been a really nice night. Have you enjoyed yourself this evening? Yeah! Yeah, it's been a laugh, and everyone oh, has got, ah, been a bit of a cough for some of us as well, hasn't it? <laughs> it don't matter as long as you made a noise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see what's funny about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an expression of enjoyment at the liquid that I'm drinking, that's all it is. I was hot, and now I'm not. <laughs> Everybody makes that noise, you do. If you're first, I bet you had that tango. You went, oh, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> See, she did. See, I bet you do it as well. You'll forget that I've said this, right? But it's a bet tonight. I'll bet you go to the bar or so, you have a drink, and you go, oh, I'm really thirsty. I'll bet that first slurp of drink there, I bet you go, <laughs> like, oh, he was right, wasn't he? Cool, he's a boy, isn't he? <laughs> It'd be like deja vu, wouldn't it, eh? <laughs> I wonder what the French say for deja vu. <laughs> Oh, this seems very familiar. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, uh, God, you know, I watch a lot of telly, right? When I come because I get in late and I got all the Sky Telly, they've got all, this, all, you know, all these old programmes on. And uh, uh, Planet of the Apes, I like watching Planet of the Apes. And Sky at Night, I watch a lot of Sky at Night with Patrick Mower, right? And <laughs> it's been on. I got in oh, really late night and I watched it and I'd been on about ten minutes and I dozed off in front of the telly, right? And I went into this like dreamlike state and I dreamt, and this is true, I dreamt that I was like the pilot of like a space shuttle. And I went over, I said, Look, I ain't done this before. And then people at NASA said, Don't worry, it's just like an experimental flight. So if something goes wrong, it's only you. So I went, Oh lovely. And they said, But don't worry, you will have a co-pilot who'll be a monkey, right? and he can help you, right? And what happens, when you get on board, right, if you type in your name, the monkey types in his name, you type in your name, right, all the instructions come up, right, on the computer of what you've got to do. So I said, oh, well, OK, then that'll be fine, right? And he got to the day of the launch, right, and I strapped myself in, and the monkey was sitting there, and he was strapping himself, and I could see he was having a bit of trouble, he was doing that, right? And I said, what's the matter? He said, oh, I've got a bit of fur caught in the Velcro at the back, right? <laughs> So I said, oh, I'll release it for you. And I went down and I opened it up and I pushed it shut. He went, oh, thank you very much. I went, you're welcome, my Simeon friend, like that. He went, thank you. <laughs> it's just a dream, it's not real life, OK? <laughs> and we, we, I said, you could punch in your name on the computer. He said, yes, I will. And he punched his name in, which was Trevor, right? <laughs> and, well, I don't know what his surname was or nothing. These instructions come. He said, hello, Trevor, these are your instructions for the forthcoming flight. You'll be leaving Earth's, Earth's atmosphere at velocity of 1,500 miles an hour. Once you get into outer space, do two orbits around the Earth. You must check the oxygen-hydrogen content. It should be 28% oxygen, and the rest of it should be hydrogen. Once you've done two orbits around the Earth, make re-entry at 46 degrees precisely, or you'll burn up on re-entry. Once you get 1,500 metres above sea level, deploy the parachutes to ensure a safe landing in the Atlantic Ocean, whereupon you'll be picked up by the Royal Navy I thought, blimey, that's a lot for a little monkey to remember, right? <laughs> so I said, have you got all that? He said, yes, I have. Punch in your name. So I punched in my name and my instructions came up and he just said, feed the monkey. You know, <laughs> you know, a lot of people ask me where I come from and I always tell them that I was an airfix kit, right? <laughs> They don't believe me because it's not true, you know. And I don't think it's important where, where you come from, it's where you end up, right? And the way to realise that where you end up is think back. Think back to your earliest memories, right? To the earliest happiest memories, right? And normally they're really good, right? And if you can go back, so the earliest one I can feel was four years old, right? And that was the first time that I remembered it snowing, right? Now everybody knows it snows, right? But as a four year old, the first time I actually took it in, right? And my mum had told me all about it. And, and it was Christmas time and there was a noise on the roof and I was sitting there watching the telly. I said to my mum, Mum, what's that noise on the roof? Is that snow? And she went, No, it's reindeer. I went, oh. <laughs> 
And my mum, my mum loved it when it snows. She used to say it was the only time of year that our garden looked as good as everybody else's, right? <laughs> and, and I got up the next day and it had it, it snowed everywhere, it was white everywhere, right? And she let me go out and play in it. And the first time I couldn't play it, right? So I wrote my name in the snow. I was like, oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. But because I'm dyslexic, I wrote Trevor, right? Which I didn't see as a problem. But I felt really sorry for my sister, because girls, girls can't, you can't write your name in the snow, can you? You have not got the apparatus for the job, have you, right? So I feel really sorry for my sister. So one year, right, one year, I actually made her a stencil so she could do it. You know, I've got one of these like this, right? <laughs> so all she had to do was just lay it on the snow like this, right? And just go like that. <laughs> <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> and then saying that was it, wasn't it? Okay, but as you know, as you probably know, snow don't last long, does it? You know, once the weather warms up, snow's gone, it melts. And as a four-year-old, that's a difficult concept to come to terms with, you know. One day the snow's there, get up the next day, it's gone. And I couldn't comprehend what had happened, right? So I went and saw my mum, I said, Mum, where's the snow gone? And she said, well, well it's, uh, it's melted. So I said, all oh, right. I said, so where's it gone? She said, well, it's just melted, so it's, it's gone into the ground. So I said, well, when will it be back? When can I have some more? She said, well, you can't have no more until it snows. So I said, well, when will it snow again? She said, well, I don't know that. I don't control the weather. So I said, well, can you make me some snow? And she said, I can't make snow. And I said, but you're my mum. You can make anything. You make my dinner. Make me some snow. And she went, all right, well, go in the kitchen and go and get me, like, like a tissue or a paper napkin. And I'll see what I can do. So I went out and I just got a normal, like, paper napkin like that. And I gave it to her. I said, what are you going to do? And she said, I'll do some magic. What's this, right? And she folded up the paper napkin in half and she creased it along the top. And she folded it in half again like that. And she creased it along the top. And she went, what chest is going to be like magic? <laughs> she went, it's like magic, isn't it? I went, no. <laughs> it's just you ripping up bits of paper. And she went, don't be such an impatient little bugger. Wait a minute. Magic's going to happen very soon. Snow's going to be here very soon. Look at this. And she opened up the saving napkin, right? And she went, look, this is a snowflake. Look, see? Now, I wasn't that impressed either. <laughs> I said, no, it's too late now. I said, what's that then? And she went, that's what a snowflake looks like. I said, yeah, what it's made from? And she went, no, you stupid div. Snow's made from water. Watch this. Let's do one more time. Come on, the only Mr. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. 